Let's shout several powerful hallelujah. 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 Aren't you glad that you are alive to witness today? This is the last Wednesday in the month of September, 2020. And this is the first breakthrough surface we are having after the epidemics. Aren't you glad that you are alive? You are not in the mortuary, but you are in the sanctuary of God today. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate the Lord. Appreciate Him. Worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. Adore Him. Give Him praise this morning. Give Him adoration. His word of honor is word of adoration. His word to be magnified. He's worthy to be exalted. Thank him. Magnify him. It's by his mercy you and I are not consumed. Worship him this morning. Adore him. Give him praise. Give him worship. Daddy, we worship Lord this morning. We give you all the glory. We give all the adoration. Thank you for the fight for salvation. Glory, honor, adoration to your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' wonderful day, we have given thanks. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, the word says, Let us come boldly into the throne of grace, so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You are going to say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, I come boldly this morning into the throne of grace. Please have mercy on me. Let's ask for mercy this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in every area of our lives. Daddy, be, please be merciful to us in your infinite mercy, including each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, continue to preserve us all over your mercy. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. The fact is said that we may, um, uh, let's come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I don't know what is your needs today, but I want to assure you that the grace of God is available here to meet you at the very point of your need. Maybe your own need is financial, it could be material, it could be in the area of your business, but the grace of God is available here. You are saying, Father, today, please grant me grace to help in every area of my need. Grant me grace to help, O oh Lord, in every area of my need. The grace of God is available. Begin to ask for the grace. Father, grant each and every one of us grace to have in every area of our need this morning. In the name of Jesus, grant us grace, O Lord, to help in our finances. Grant us grace to help in our marital life. Grant us grace to help in our business. Grant us grace to have in every area of our need. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 10. Apostle Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. There's no man or woman that can be greater than the grace of God that's available to you. You are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, make me great in life by your grace. Make me great, oh Lord, by your grace. Please make me great by your grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking, oh Lord, that you make us great in life by your grace. In the name of Jesus, make us great, oh Lord, by your grace. In the name of Jesus, it is your great grace that make great. Father, make us great, O oh Lord, by your grace. Make our family great, O oh Lord, by your grace. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, Lord. Glory be to the holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2, the word says, 
grace and peace be multiplied unto you. You are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your grace and peace be multiplied unto me and my family. In the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your grace and peace be multiplied unto us. In the name of Jesus, let your grace and peace be multiplied unto our family. In the name of Jesus, let your grace be multiplied unto us, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, make your grace to be multiplied, your grace and peace. Let it be multiplied upon our life, upon our family. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father Lord. Glory be to the holy name. In Jesus, wonderful name, we are praying. In Jesus, wonderful name, we are praying. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 8. The word says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have all this sufficiency, that you always abound to every good works. There are graces to help. You are going to be asking the Lord, because God is God of all grace. There's grace for speed, there's grace for lifting, there's grace for promotion. There's grace of ease. There's grace for favor. You are going to say, God of all grace, please make all grace abound towards me and my family. That we always have all this insufficiency, that we are bound to every good works. Make all grace abound towards me and my family. That we always have all this insufficiency, and we are bound to every good works. In the name of Jesus, God of all grace, our heartfelt desire this morning is that you make all grace abound towards us. That we always have all this insufficiency, that we are bound to every good works. In the name of Jesus, make all grace abound towards us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, make all grace abound towards us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your grace be available to us. Make all grace abound towards us, that we always have all this insufficiency, that we always abound to every good works. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father Lord. Glory be to the holy name. In Jesus, wonderful name, we are praying. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 12, verse 7 to 9, Paul said he prayed three times that God would take away the infirmity with him. But God told him, my grace is sufficient for you. I don't know what you are going through this morning, but I want to assure you that the grace of God is sufficient for you. You are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in whatever my, I'm going through now, let your grace be sufficient for me in the name of Jesus. Let your grace be sufficient for us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. In every area of our lives, let your grace be sufficient for us in the name of Jesus. Let your grace be sufficient for us, O Lord, in every area of our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Make your grace to be sufficient for us in our spiritual life. Let your grace be sufficient for us in our finances. Let your grace be sufficient for us in our businesses. Let your grace be sufficient for us in our ministry. In the name of Jesus, God of all grace, let your grace be sufficient for us, O Lord, all throughout the remaining month of this year and beyond. Let your grace be sufficient for us in every area of our lives. In the precious name of Jesus, thank you, Father Lord. Glory be to the holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 7, Paul said to the Philippians, he said, Ye all are partaker of my grace. Ye all are partaker of my grace. The man of God, as God has prepared the man of God, and there are a lot of graces God has deposited in his life. And for you and I must be partaker of that grace this morning. You are going to cry out to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, make me partaker of your grace upon yourself and this morning. And start, let new things start in my life. Make me partaker of your graces upon your servant. In the name of Jesus, make me partaker of your grace upon your servant. And let a new thing spring up in my life beginning from today. In the name of Jesus. Abba Father, please Lord, make us partakers of the graces upon your servant. In the name of Jesus, the grace of ease, the grace that you have deposited upon your servant. Oh Lord God, and make every one of us partake of that grace this morning. And let new things spring up in our life beginning from this morning. In the name of Jesus, make us partakers of your grace upon your servant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. Glory be to the holy name. In Jesus precious name we are praying in jesus precious name we are praying last list i want to know first 13 the ones that will arise and have mercy of us there for the time to pray for us come here the same time is come we are going to cry to god father by your mercy 
Favor me this morning in the name of Jesus. By your mercy, let the doors of favor be opened to me in the beginning of this day in the name of Jesus. Father, by your mercy, open the doors of favor to us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. Glory be to the holy name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. As we have said this morning, so shall I leave it down to you in the precious name of Jesus. The Lord will meet you and I at the front of our need, and our life shall never remain the same again. In the name of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus as we welcome our neighbors to this new year. Let's begin. Let's welcome our neighbors. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. At least this is new calendar year of the New Christian Church of God. Hallelujah. You are welcome back in the name of Jesus. And as that year has declared, this time shall be your season of leaping up in the name of Jesus. Testimony time. Please, if you have a testimony, everybody, all of us will have a testimony. At least being alive is a testimony. But if you have something you want to share with us to develop more of our faith, please, can you come out? Hallelujah. Just because of social distance, we need to hold it to you. We are very sorry for that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have come to testify of the goodness of the Lord over my life, my husband's life, and the lives of my children. I am one of those that started this breakthrough with Pastor Larry to the glory of God. I've been, I was living in Lagos then. Then I had to relocate. I relocated for almost um, over 10 years. And I give God all the glory that he has brought me back to Lagos in peace. I return all the glory, journey message for promotion, for everything God has done for me and my family. To God alone, I give all the glory. Hallelujah. Even living my 
my house and come because I see on the grammar. Every time on Sunday I see church, I will dress up, come and pack, dance in the house. When they see the picture, you can't have that to the church again. I said, I'm going to be present with my man. I'm not in the purpose of coming. Lord, 
that hear their own tongues, they are not enough to glorify your name. All we could say is thank you. Blessed be your name, King of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. We cover the testimony with the blood of Jesus. Testifiers are covered with the blood of Jesus. As a result, God, multiply our testimony, Lord. Thank you because I thank you, Father. Jesus' name we pray. appreciate the Lord with our offering. It's time to bless his holy name. The Lord has done a good thing, a wondrous thing in our life, in our midst. In return, I want us to just appreciate him. Even if you don't have any money to give, please, just give your dance. He deserves our dance. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. It could only be him that have done that that he has done in our life. See, today, the gate of hell does not want us to be alive. But Jesus said no. And when mercy said no, nobody can change it. So shall we just go on our feet? Oh, 
holy name. By the special grace of God, this is the beginning of a new thing. And the Lord will do great and mighty things in our lives in the name of Jesus. Now, I welcome you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit. Today's, to today's um, great to service. You will not go empty-handed. I will not go empty-handed. None of us will go empty-handed in the name of Jesus. By the special grace of God, Pastor will be Wait at the end of the service, if anybody wants to see Pastor Larry Akio, he will be at behind the auditorium to see whoever wants to see him. And the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen.
shall lift up our voice and begin to appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's give him all that glory. Let's give him all that glory. Exalt his name. Give him praise. Oh, mommy, why 
you should be thanking God because the spirit of Antichrist has not taken over you. People are not afraid to go to a Jumota market. But when they start to go to church, they are afraid. Have you seen that kind of spiritual madness? I went to Jumota to dedicate a shop. Friends, even on Sunday, people still jump back on the street and don't want to use face masks. You go to market, you, 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 you are not afraid. They are coming to church. Thank God for you. You said, how can somebody of 70 years still afraid to die? Can you imagine? You enter bus every day. They come to church. Say, ah. So, Father, I thank you for my life. You know, I'm not ashamed of you. I'm not afraid to serve you, to worship you, your presence in the sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege, for the faith you are giving to us to be here. In Jesus' mighty name. I want you to just pray three just prayer points. Then you'll be seated. This one is not a long message. I need to welcome each other. Because some people want to see. Ah, the first one, ah, let me wait until, until some people come and say, Pastor, I'm sorry, I will come for the anointing service next week. I will start my own. I will start my own there in uh, October. I said, No problem. No problem. Gio says something. He said, If anybody died this year, he said, Just know that it's not Corona that killed them. He said, Just know that they are time. To go as God. And I know that because my father will join them. And if anybody tells me my father will die this year, I'll tell you no. The man was still driving. He, he was still in my house in January. And by March, just two weeks after my birthday, it's as if he was waiting for my 50th birthday. Exactly two weeks after, he just chose to go. He said, I don't want to stress you people. I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to go. So you said, if you said anybody that died this year, so your time has not come. And that's why I see standing. Say, Father, for the rest of my life, I will serve you. I will praise you. I will worship you because I'm still here. Can you just say, Lord, for the rest of my life, I will serve you. For the rest of my life, I will worship you. My family, as for me and my household, we will worship the Lord. We will worship the Lord. We will worship the Lord. Oh Lord, I made a commitment to the Lord that for the rest of my life I will serve you in Jesus' name. Pray. Say, Father, the dimension of open levels you gave me is not enough. In an unusual way, open the levels of unusual mercy. The dimension my family has never enjoyed before. The dimension more than enough for this end time. Open the heavens of unusual mercy. Over me, oh God. Over my family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, let me enjoy a new dimension of your mercy. A new dimension of your mercy. A new dimension of your mercy. Oh yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks the way we cannot see. He will make a way for me. Oh, he will be my God. Hold me close into his side. For each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. By the road in the wilderness, He leads me. Rivers in the desert. Rivers in the desert. We are seen. Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Hey, what's 
over this nation, Nigeria? There are questions in our hearts. Our government cannot answer us. Arise, O oh Lord. Answer us over Nigeria. There are problems over Nigeria. Oh, our government cannot solve it. Help us solve all this problem. And sort Nigeria out. Sort us out. Can we open our mouth and pray? Oh Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we step water before we pray? People are still sending their requests, even during the pandemic. God is still there to answer their questions. Nobody can solve, you can solve it. Over all these requests, they wrote to you because nobody can solve it for them. Some problems that nobody can solve. Answers the questions in this request. Jesus, every question people are asking over this request, turn it to testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, since let's be seated. If if you are born in the month of uh, September, can you come? September children. Yes. We are, we are not going to wait. At least we, we, are, we still met in September, so we broke them. Let's pray for September children. Because we are here today, we broke for you. Is anybody's birthday today? September. We should get some. Church, let me pray for them. It's as if they are the one born in the first month after COVID. Can you hear me pray for them? That the Lord will put an end to everything that is in question in their heart and answer them. That all their problems will be supernatural, supernatural solution. Help me pray that by this time next year, they will not remain like this. That by this time next year, God will have given them multiple testimony, multiple victories, open doors, divine support, divine encouragement. Let's pray for them. Father, the problem that nobody can solve for them. Jesus, help them solve it. We pray for you that the Lord has brought you to the month of your birth. And today is the last day of that month. Today be the last day of your questions. You go to October for a new beginning. You are blessed. Receive birthday gift from the Lord. We pray that the rest of your life will be the best. And by this time next year, God will multiply you. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. Happy birth month in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the last prayer point, I want to pray it, sit and sit there, and I'll pray. One of the things that COVID has done is that it has removed some people from their seats. This year, a whole lot of people have been removed from their seats. Some people were bragging against their subordinates in January, and by every day they said we're removed. There are some people that were bragging. That's what the Bible said that. If you say you, by tomorrow you do this, don't you say, say that, say, if God will, say, I will go here, I will go here, I will do this, say, it is if God, I want you to pray this prayer while you are sitting. Say, Jesus, since it has been your will to keep me on my seat in destiny, let no power remove me from my seat before my time. Can you just pray that prayer? The Lord, no power will remove me from my seat. Can you pray that prayer? Listen to me. I'm saying this prophetically this morning. This is the first meeting we are having in more than six months. That God, it is your way to keep me. Let no power move me from my seat. No power shall move me from your seat. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, because you are the one that has kept and every of us, and we are here to say thank you. 
Let everyone that is here this day and those hearing me online, let no power move them from their seats. Let the power of resurrection keep that seat you are giving them in their marriages, career, businesses, in earth. You won't lose your seat. And your coat of many colors shall not be taken away from you. I saw somebody being taken I saw when, when I was seated there, I saw somebody being a garment being restored back to somebody. I don't know the garment they took from you, but they are restoring back your garment. Anyone that has lost a particular garment, I don't know what that garment is. The garment you lost, God is giving you back your garment. They thought they can expose you to shame, but the Lord said, You will never know that shame. He said, I'm covering you again. Thank you, Father. For there is a full restoration. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. I'd like to welcome you back after, you know, funny enough, my birthday celebration was the last celebration here. And it's as if God just wanted to honor me because I would have, I, I wouldn't have, I couldn't imagine what could have happened. If it, if it was two days before birthday, when people have tried to honor God in my life, look at how everything went. Can you imagine what could have happened? Then when I was thinking that this was good, by the time I got to church on Sunday, that was another experience. And God just honored us. So we are meeting again after six months and uh, six and a half months exactly. Let's clap for Jesus. And I want to thank God for your steadfastness. The Lord keep on establishing you and none shall take your place. During my birthday, we, we launched some of my book. But I'm not going. To, I'm not doing any launching again. But um, it was only three without that time. So during the COVID, it is it is six now. So if you if you want it, let's go for Jesus. That's the privilege I have. Now two of them are reprints. Now I have the the greatest use of life. The greatest use of life. It's supposed to be two thousand, but I said they should sell for one five. Then this believers uh, uh, covenant weapon for lasting freedom. I said they should sell for. One five, and then it's of the highest print. It costs. If I tell you that we spend millions over this, you won't believe it, because I told them I insist on quality. Then making maximum impact, making maximum impact. I think we, I don't know what to call it. How much you call it? This this other one, one thousand. So the rest I said we sell the rest one thousand. Spiritual meaning of our spiritual body. This one I preached for several weeks to know the spiritual meaning of your uh, body. Then um, the understanding the mystery and secret of life. 1,000. Then overcoming evil elders. Overcoming, you know that are evil elders. So overcoming, then your family too. Overcoming evil elders. 1,000. So it's supposed to be 7,000. But I said they should sell everything for 5,000. For anyone that wants it. The, the six should go for 5,000. But if you pick one one, they sell for one one. So thank you so much. Now let's open our Bible to... Clap for Jesus, you want to clap. Is that you want to clap or don't want to clap? I still have 43. I have 25 more minutes and we're on our way. I still have 43. I read from verse 15 thereabout. I still have 43 from verse 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of history, your King. Thus say the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty water, which bringeth forth the chariot and us, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. <laughs> they are extinct, they are quenched as told. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragon and the host. Because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. To give drink to my people. My chosen. Verse 21 together. These people have I fought for myself. They shall show forth my presence. You see, I, I, 
I, I see something about God. We have been looking at, for some weeks now, we have been looking at the God of divine ability. The God of divine ability. And we are looking at topic today, the God of the new things. The God of new things. Now, each time you see God wants to do something strange, he always introduces himself. Because if he, God feels that there are times people could have forgotten who he is. Because if you look at the Bible, in the Old Testament, many times he had to reintroduce himself. These people know him more, but he's trying to reintroduce himself. And at times, he wants to reintroduce himself with a new name. So that you can know a dimension of him you have not known before. Many times, he appeared to different people in different names. He appeared to Abraham and said, I'm the Almighty. He appeared to Moses as the I am that I am. He appeared to me as the ability that cannot fail. I know this God. Each time he introduced himself, he's about to do something unique. So here he said, I am the Lord. I'm the Holy One. I'm the Creator. Then he kind of said, I'm your king. Tell somebody, he's my king. Tell somebody, he is my king. You see, king always pays for prices. King, you, you they call them cardio uh, uh, or see, because they can spare surprises. They can come from an angle you least expect, and there is somebody here. There's an angle God is coming that will do, that will make you to be dumbfounded, because it's going to come in a, in a way that all now will come to your family that will make you to bow before God. Do you believe God is still doing that? God still, I know people that in the midst of COVID, I was still dedicating houses. In the midst of COVID, people are still getting admission and they are still traveling. Don't, follow, don't let them listen that they say people are not traveling. People are still traveling. And God said, listen to me. I'm the one that allowed enemy to gather against you in chariots and in horses. I'm the one that made them to fall before you. Verse 17. Which brings forth the chariots? I mean, I allowed the chariot of the enemy. I allowed the horses of the enemy. I allowed the army and their power to come. They lie down together. They cannot rise again because of you. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. I said, the Lord said that those ones that has gathered against you, they will not rise against you. Yeah. With their army, he said, they will be subdued. Yeah. He said, they are quenched as thou. Now, you know, uh, he was now saying, remember you know the formative. When I look at the challenges I face this year, friends, I have to go back to the word of God. Truly speaking, there are things that when you remember, it makes you to shed tears. Even though there are times that we don't have people where we lose them. Even though my father, he, I, you know, I used to say, why, why did he do this? Then after I had that he died. Ah, even though he died at 84, I won't lie to you, the thing is not, uh, ah, it's not easy. There are times I, I, I just sit there and I, talk, I thought about how, 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 I look at his strength. I look at how my father was good. Early I was good. And I say, ah, you mean I will miss? I won't see him again? I will go. So you discover that a lot of things that happened this year, you know, we lost a co-worker. She just, she just died like that. We didn't, we didn't feel nothing. I mean, I begin to wonder what is happening here. And the Lord said, remember you not the formative. That means, there are things that you look at at the back and you want to have a pain in your heart. Many of us as relatives far and abroad that this has happened to this year. Some of us have lost our jobs. Some have been rather redundant. Some, they reduced their salary. But God is still saying, remember you not the formative. Many times when God allowed things to happen, our heart is full of questions. And we are saying, why me, why me? It's instead of asking, why me? He said, God, what are you saying in all this? Because the ways of God are past finding out. Can't you see that, truly speaking, COVID in Nigeria is just a kind of a drama? You know, because the way the thing came and the way they said it, it disappeared is uh, so amazing. Because I begin to wonder, are you sure that's really COVID in Nigeria? Maybe it came, and it came in our dream. <laughs> because I see some people are here to just make gain out of some force, some things. But then, if I thought it's true, which I know, the disease is true. Are you getting me? But when I look 
at the thing critically. It's not more than some of these things that we have been having before and God has been healing us. They say it's contagious. What about chicken boss? Didn't we conquer it? What about uh, small boss? Is he is is a small boss? Okay, I thought they said one is small boss, one is chicken boss, one is mizu. Whichever boss we conquer it before. What about polio? We conquer it before. So God is saying, remember not the former thing. Because any time the enemy attack an aspect of humanity, it's because I'm about to show a new leaf, a new chapter. And there is somebody hearing me here, I see God opening a brand new chapter in the book of your destiny. Yeah. Concerning your personal destiny, a brand new chapter of glory, a brand new chapter of honor, a brand new chapter of lifting shall be opened in Jesus' name. Yeah. Anytime you see the word new, I check my dictionary. It means not in a system before. God is saying, I want to do something new, so don't remember the old. He said, what I want to do is not be in the system before. Because the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, 1 Corinthians 2 9 said, but as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor here had, neither have entered into the heart of man, the thing which God has prepared for them that love him. So can you imagine now? God said, why am I saying you should forget the former thing? Because something I'm cooking for you, even your own eyes have not seen it. You know the funniest thing? God kept it from the eyes of, of your friend so that they will appreciate God with you when it comes. God has kept it from the eyes of your enemy so that they will be flabbergasted and they will be humiliated because of the amount of favor God has shown you. He said eyes has not seen it before. Because if they have seen it on time, they will have shortchanged it. There is something God is packaging for your family here. God has decided to do it and nobody can stop him. And it is something that is strange. It is not in existence before. It's an honor that will be sudden. Lifting on in that, rising on the stop. It shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. So when you say the word new, he said, I will do a new thing. He said, I will do something that is not in existence before. What does it mean again? said? To say new thing, it means different from the former. Anything said new, you say this one is different from the former. No, the, the kind doesn't know how to deceive us. You said 2019 car. Then suddenly they said, uh, uh, by the you know, I mean, 2022, 2021 now, we'll soon be coming. Now, what are they trying to tell us? There are some things about this one coming that this old one doesn't have. I've seen some people say, uh, don't worry, the old car, we can help you, help you upgrade it. You see, listen to me, if they are not the same. <laughs> if it's not new, it's not new. I see people say they upgrade old model to the new one. They can upgrade it, but it's like passing the old. I said, God will not pass your blessing. Yeah. A brand new one is coming for you. He said, the new one simply means something that is different from the former. There is something that is about to happen is different from the grace you used to enjoy. There is an open door coming for somebody here. It is not like the door that will have been opened before. If you have been experiencing one door open, there is still two living gates. There are doors that are not just one. There are two, three, four together. So multiple doors are about to be open to somebody here. You will begin to have multiple streams of income. Mother will come from the front, from the back, from the left, from the right. Do you really believe that? Say, Lord, I believe. I believe in the new. He said, the new is something that is different from the former or from the old. Or it means change for the better. Something that has been changed for the better. Or rejuvenated. Transformation. So, this money... I want you to know that whatever you lost in March, April, May, June, July, August, September, only one breakthrough is enough. Oh, yeah. Just one breakthrough. And you will forget your tears. Do you know that Ojo Kiro Kamari by? When your rain begins to fall, there's no way you will be soaked. When the rain falls, there's a need of change of garments. 
Somebody already is about to fall. Because we have been surviving by the deals. The deal we give back to rain now. Because the deals are not enough for you. Rain, nobody used due to build a house. You need a rain. And I see it. God is about to make your rain to fall. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Behold, the formatting has come to pass. That means he was the one that had the power to make the formatting to come to pass. So he has the power to make the new thing to come to pass. So if he has spoken in the past and the formatting came to pass, then if he has spoken something concerning the future, it will come to pass. Amen. I said to come to pass. Amen. In the course of COVID, some old people still got married. Old people got married. Can you imagine? You know, I saw one uh, video about one mama. They did the city of David. That mama should be 70. You can't be like that, 75. And she was a widow. Then the man too can't be less than eight. You guys see that man. I told them I see strong. Yes. Do you know what? I saw the I saw the wedding. You could see how mama was excited. Yes. That is the new. Never expire. You won't go to extinction. God will renew your strength. I'm telling you, never see this God is humorous. He can do anything. He can do anything. Don't remember the past pain. Don't remember the past failure, disappointment, miscarriages, affliction, poverty. Don't remember it again. When I say don't remember it again, don't meditate on the past failures. Don't meditate on things that didn't work. It is time to meditate on the new God is planning. Why? Lamentation 3.22. It is of the lost message that you didn't go with the old. It is of the lost message that you are not consumed with the old. Because of the compassion failure, no. Why? They are new every morning. So every morning something new must happen in your life. The Bible says, book of Psalm 16 verse 19. Psalm 16 verse 19. Thanks be to God. Who daily daily loaded us with new things. And I tell you, God is not joking. Why would he give us a time, season, days, weeks? Why did he give us a night and day? Why? Because he wants us to always wake up and say, mm, this is a brand new day. So I should expect brand new things. So each time you go to bed and you open your eyes the following morning, expect new things that day. God will not allow you to sleep and not wake up. He, because he's packaging something new for you. And the Bible said this thing, number one, like I've said, eyes has not seen it before. Number two, ears has not had it before. He says, say it to the righteous, it shall be well with him. They shall eat the fruit of their labor. Go unto the wicked. So the eyes of your enemy, eh, God has not allowed them to hear it. What he's about to do for you. He said, woe unto the wicked, he shall be healed with them. They will eat the reward of their labors. Anyone that says you will not rise, you see, they will see you rising and they'll be eating the fruit of their own pain. He said, it has not entered the heart of man. What God is about to do, it has not entered the heart of nobody. Number four, what God is about to do can only be provoked by the love of God. So in this end time, if you, are, if you don't show God that you love him, you may be enjoying the old for a long time. But when you want something in your life, prove to God that you, are, you love him beyond things. Prove to God that you love him beyond anything. And the love of God always compels God to do new things. Do you really love God beyond what you can give? For eyes has not seen. Yeah, God, what God has preserved to those that loved him. And the Bible said this love, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. He said this love, 2 Corinthians 5, 14. This love of Christ is one that constrains us. The love of Christ constrains us. He didn't allow us to overdo things. He didn't allow us to get angry beyond necessary. He didn't allow us to lose our joy. It is a constrainer. He said, I'm about to do this. So, why new thing? Why new thing? Because new thing can be very hard when people get used to the old. Do you know that the only thing that is difficult in life most of the time for people is change? Change. And most of the time, when people want to do something new, change is inevitable. I don't know who is going through hardness now. It's as if things are hard. Most of the time, when things are hard, it's, a, it's because God is packaging you for something new. So when you are seeing hardness around you, you can begin to spread something new. It's around the corner. I don't know who is here hearing me. He's a pastor, you don't understand. Things are very hard. But I tell you, congratulations. 
We have been there before. And I can prove to you, the night always give birth to day. Weeping may endure for the night. He said, the joy will come in the morning. I see somebody here. Your night, your weeping is ending with this night. I said, your weeping is ending with this night. So when you expect it new, then expect new approach to things. You must put on new approaches to issues of life. See life in the light of eternity. Press, those people that died, somebody, somebody came to me for prayer yesterday, and then we were talking, and was showing me some of his friends. We were driving around body law, showed me a house in body law, how his friend died in April, and the house within April and now is already desolate. Nobody's there. Nobody's there. So when you're expecting the new, God wants you to change your approach and start seeing things in the light of eternity. Because this life is very brief. If you live to be 50 years, like some of us have reached, you have just spent 18,280 something days. If you live to be, to be 60 years, maybe you have just pushed it small to 20, 20 something years. If you live to be, to, to be 70, it's 25,000 plus. So if you not manage to be 80, that's 28,000 plus days. Remove that from the eternity. What is that? That's why Bible never said, teach us to number our year. It said, teach us to number our day. So go and calculate your days when you get home today. Yeah. Bring your calculator and say, let me even look. How, how old am I now? How many days am I on this? Calculate it. If you are 60, 61, 61 times 3 is 65. Then look at the leap year. Maybe the leap year is 10. Add it to it. You will know the number of your year. New approaches. Then it can create lack of comfort when God is about to do something new. I've ever seen somebody getting pregnant for the first time. And I was there when my wife got pregnant for the first time. And I can tell you, the first pregnancy is not always funny. And to those of us that are that are that are that are new, that were new then, this already almost 20 years she had the she had the first baby. And then we when she wanted to deliver, she saw water. The water busted and the labor stopped. And I said, go back to sleep now. Tomorrow we'll go to the hospital. <laughs> because I don't know, none of us know anything. So when the water busted, and then the labor stopped. So I went, said, go and sleep, darling. So I checked her, she was okay. So the following morning, we went to the hospital. And they said, huh? They said, the baby has swallowed the water. They said, we swallow the water. The labor didn't continue. Now. They said, we should have come. I said, I'm sorry. See, when that one God wants to do something new, at times, you, 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 there's something that makes you comfortable. It's, you're, it's not comfortable. You are confused. You don't know what to do. Something new is coming. And you can see the joy when a, a, a new baby boy is born, but when the woman is in labor. Me, I didn't follow my wife through the phone. Don't blame me. Uh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine that label. There's some men are so courageous that they will stay there. When the woman is, uh, I didn't enter. I always, I wasn't up at the top. So can I lift up my hand in prayer? Praise God. So if your own husband is that strong, I, I give them kudos. Because you could see, I remember one of my uncle's wife, when she wanted to deliver the second baby, my uncle was all around, so I was one that took her to the hospital with another uncle. In the car, she was there, oh, I won't let him touch me again. He won't touch me again. He will never touch me again. Then we got to the hospital. Immediately the baby came. She didn't remember she said all those things. Because two years or there, she had another one. I didn't tell her to do that. Mama, you said you will not. Uh... Praise God. So when you want a new thing in your life, start seeing the invisible. Start seeing things beyond the natural. Start seeing things beyond what eyes can see. Number two is start thinking the unthinkable in God. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you are thinking about the old, you will expire. Start thinking about new. I got tired of the house I was staying before. I stayed in the house for 13 and a half years. That's why I had all my children. Then with my children, we started changing our thinking. Started thinking about new house. Then I started telling my wife, it's, it's going to be a bungalow, I mean, five bedroom bungalow. Because I was thinking as a pastor, where will you get money to build uh, anything? Better than bungalow. The wife said, uh, "You, your father is a polygamy. You have many brothers and sisters. 
you have a lot of people coming to visit you. No, you have to do a duplex. Then they designed one big house. They did five bedroom in front. They did two flat at the back. I said, what are you talking about here? Do you know I'm a full-time pastor? But I never know that your wife can even help you challenge to think. That's why you should challenge each other to think better. Do you know that immediately she brought the design and I said, okay, Lord, I receive this design. Come, finish the house in one and a half years. And I'm saying to somebody here, there is only one thing you can do for yourself. Change your thinking. Think the way God thinks. Think about the new. See yourself at the next level. See yourself singing a new song. See yourself serving Jesus with a new vigor and vitality. If you don't see it, you can't achieve it. The future you cannot see is the future you cannot feature. If you're going to feature your future, the eyes of your spirit must see it. And may I ask somebody here, where do you see yourself in the rest three months? Because this year remains three months. Do you know three months is too much for God to build the house for somebody? Ah, somebody says, you know that year is slow. <laughs> Do you know a three months is too much for God to change a whole family's experience? Three months is too much. And I tell you, if you can begin to see and think the unthinkable, if you can change the, the paradigm shift and stop thinking like the way your father was thinking, and stop thinking like the way your friend were thinking, everybody was at the same level, let your own thoughts come on top. Don't let anybody tell you that economy is bad in Nigeria. I tell you, people are still being blessed. People are doing business. Do you know in the midst of economy, man, people are not doing three, four business together. I know two people that are into travel agency. One is already selling uh, fresh fish, selling uh, enyawo, selling goat meat. And when she told me the profit she made in one month, I was amazed. The other person is already doing snail, to be exporting snail abroad. Got all the lenses within a few weeks, both in abroad and in Nigeria. So I want you to change your thinking. You are still looking for a job. Your thinking is small. Maybe God wants you to be an employer. Please, expand the new this period. You will not miss it. Amen. It will not miss you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Genuinely believe the new God promised you. Number three, genuinely believe the word of God that he told you. That mama, they are married. I had to ask her that. And the children said, Mama, they can see you getting married again. Mama said, What? Me, me. You know, can you imagine? Tell somebody can see happen to you. Something you can see happen to you. Do you know what the, who that mama married? The man that preached Christ to her when she was a teenager. Am I lying, man? You, you watch it, you, you have it. So, the man that preached Christ to her. The man who is a widower now. And God did it. Do you believe that what he spoke to you will come to pass? The Bible says, by two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. The Lord spoke his word, he backed his word with his own. He said, I swear, I will never lie unto Abraham. His, his word is enough. He now backed it with his own. Forever, O oh God, that word is settled. Did God speak something to you? It is high time for you to believe it. It can be delivered. It will be delivered. This period, in Jesus' mighty name. Then be excited about the new you are expecting. You see, many of us want to see it before we believe it. But in the kingdom of God, we believe it before we see it. So if you really believe it, so get excited about what you are expecting. I've seen people that went to buy wedding, wedding, uh, wedding car. Expect, <laughs> excitedly. Expecting the man. Do you know the man actually come? Yeah. I don't know who God is promising something new here. Go and make room for that new thing. Be excited about it. Be bold when you are saying it. Be bold when you are saying it. Don't let anybody call you to think that, oh, it will not work. Make room. Believe God for big things now. He promised you a big house. Stop looking for cutter plot. Only in Lagos, I know that that's what they call color. When I was going for him, I never hear cotton plot in my life. Until I went to some places after black work. Man, I saw many, four people will buy one plot. And they will build a room and parlor. No, that's their level. 
But I tell you, God is saying he can bless you beyond cut plot. He's promising you bigger things. And be excited about it. Then act upon what you're expecting. Take a step of faith. The year course put to the salary, I opened international doors unto you. The first thing I did, I went to get international passport. Then all of a sudden, I said to God, but if you're opening the door for me, I want to open for my wife. I don't want to be a man of God that be traveling alone. The Lord said, He has had me. So one day, as we're traveling, as we're traveling, we had we were by Eleganza. That was more than 10 years ago. And I had God say, Now you'll be traveling out. I told my wife, the Lord has just spoken to me now. And she looked at me because that time, you could, if you, maybe, I should, maybe you don't know what I'm saying. When I started as full time, my salary was 10000 So at the time I was saying, it decreased to 11000 So imagine 11000 with already four children. And I was talking about, and I told my wife, go and do your international passport now. Because that would be, she was looking at me. Do you know that a day or two after that, Somebody called me from Ilupeju and said, Pastor, God told me as you, as you sponsor you across, where would you like to go? That was in April. Joe is traveling in, uh, in May. No, I think it was in Feb February. Joe was to travel in uh, May to Israel. Then I said, I want to go to Israel with you. He said, go and find out how much. That time it, was, it would be $3,000. I said, $3,000. As at that time, what we call the money your hand has never touched. Part of the new is that new money will enter your hand. I, I said the money you have never touched before will enter your hand for the first time. From that day, you know my life never go down. This person gave me three thousand dollars more than ten years ago, and I went to pay. Well, when I was paid, I told them, please, this is a deposit for me and my wife. I don't know where the rest will come from. And immediately I said to me and my wife, two days after, somebody called me and said, Pastor, somebody told me you are trying to travel out. I've never told anybody. Is it true you want to go to Israel? I've never told anybody. They gave me $1,000 check. Before then, I never know that you can go to a bank and go and cash dollar. New thing. I said, your life will express new things. <laughs> then, before you say Jack Robinson, another person sent me $2,000. So I went to deposit. So for the first time, the prophecy came true. I too, I was the first to travel outside with my wife together in the whole family. Many years after, when I, immediately after that, I, I've not stopped traveling. Even this year before the lockdown, I've been to two countries. And my father said, Nan, the name of this family has been loved through and through, through you because God is a God of new things. Can you be on your feet? I have no time to share with you the rest that is in my heart. Because this new thing, in the area you can explain, you can explain it in the God giving you a new heart. Ezekiel 36 to 26. He said, I will give you a new heart. He said, if you have the heart that have been doubting the word of God, may God give you a new heart. Every heart that have been doubting the word of God, every heart that doesn't see God doing impossibility, every heart that is doubting God shall change. God will give you a new heart. A heart that we believe God for what God has spoken will happen. You just have that heart. Because the heart, many of us have, is the heart of doubt. It will change today. God can give a new name. You can go and read Genesis 32 24, Genesis 17. He gave Abraham a new name. He gave Jacob a new name. The Lord will give you a new name. Have they called you barren before? You shall become mother of children. Have they called you beggar before? Your condition will change. Because God has the capacity to give you a new name. So this money, expect that area of your life. There they are calling you old name. Expect the old name to go. Expect new name to come. There's a time you're a thousand years. Somebody told my father that he has never gathered 1,000 era at a time together in his life. That was in the 70s. That in all his life, that at a time you have 1,000 naira in your pocket, in, in your account. And that some of us like that. There's a limit you have not broken. God will give you a new name. Yeah. Some of you have never seen one million of your own in your life. Some of you have never seen 
putting money together and say, I have this money that is my own. Check it. If your account is going dormant, God is going to do a new thing. Yeah. During this COVID, many people's savings went down. As many people whose savings has gone down, it's coming up again. Yeah. I say your savings are coming up again. Yeah. For the Lord is going to give you a new name. Yeah. Then it can be the place of new vision. God give you a new vision. Hosea 4 verse 6. He said, where can a new vision? People perish. You will not perish. For the Lord will give you a new vision. Concerning your marriage, concerning your children, concerning your business, receive new vision in the name of Jesus. It can be the reign of new mercies. Lamentation chapter 3, 22. He said, new mercies every day. So God can open the heavens of new mercies over you. So what used to kill people in your family can't kill you. What used to limit people cannot limit you because you are enjoying new mercies. Lamentation 3, 22, 23. Now, it can be in the area of new heights. The Bible talks about new heights. He said, we're people to see Jesus in every place, far above principalities and power. He can take you to the new height, Ephesians 3, 18. Then it can be new provision. God can want to provide for you in a new way. I see this in my life every month. The way God has been meeting my need for the past 28 years I started pastoring is that I've never in my life, and I say with all humility and honor to God, open my mouth to ask a mortal man for money. I say with all humility. Never. Because God told me I am the ability that cannot fail. I will be your source and I will be your sustainer. And I'm saying to somebody here, you have already been living in insufficiency. Things have always not been enough. New provision is coming. For the Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus, receive a new dimension of provision. He can choose to feed you by giving you the ravens to come and feed you. I've seen God meeting my need in a mysterious way. Do you know the funny thing? There's no country I enter that I don't receive favor. Yes. Every country I enter now, it's as if they are waiting for me. He said, Pastor, can we, please, let's open an account for you here. They are the one who open an account for me. I, I can't share testimony with you, but I can tell you, God can give you new provision. Amen. He can do it for you. Amen. Don't limit God, because he can give you only out of the rock. He can make impossibility possible. Don't time down. For coming today, even in seven days before now, you will see new provision. You will see beauty entering your life. It can be giving you new power. New anointing. Act 180. Act 180. Act 180. Shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. The Bible talks about fresh outpouring. That is somebody here, the Lord will give you outpouring of his anointing and of his power. Because without power, why Jeremiah you? If you don't have power with God, there are many I fear Jeremiah fear you in life. There are many, uh, 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 what do you call it now? Uh, money sheni. They have money shenis and they are sheni bani daros. People that will be kissing you and be killing you. You need the power of God to deal with them. Then God can give you a new pursuit. That it will change your taste. And your taste will be the taste of eternity. Matthew 6, 33. Seek you first, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. So all I had this morning, is that I'm the God of the new things. I can answer questions nobody can answer, and I can solve problems nobody can solve. Can you go and say, Lord, I thank you? Because I will no longer remember the old things. Now I remember the, former, the, the new thing in my life. The new things are happening now. New celebrations are coming. Yes, I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you, Lord. New things are happening. Can you begin to expect it? New things are happening. Say, Lord, I will not doubt you again. I believe in the new thing. You are the God of new things. You are the God of the new thing. He's the God of divine ability. He will do a new thing for you. Oh, thank you. We worship you. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you, I am lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Say, Father, open my eyes to see the invisible. So that I can be able to do the impossible. I want to see the new things, oh God, you promised me. Don't leave me the way you, the, the, the way I am, oh Lord. Thank you, my Father. i like to pray now. If you're under my voice and you not give your life to Jesus Christ, if you used to be born again and you're bastarded, and you say, God, I am tired of the old life. I want to live a new life in Jesus. I want to pray for you now. Can you wave your hand to me? 
If there's anybody like that you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, just wave your hand and I'll pray for you now. Anybody like that, if today is your, is your day that you don't know that God has chosen you for salvation, or you personally you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, is anybody like that? I, I can't see power to the end. If there's anybody like that, please let me bring them to the front. Then the rest of us, let's be on our feet as we raise our two hands before God. Say, my heavens are open at last. 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 Join me sing and praise the Lord. My heavens are open at last. Oh yes. Join me sing and praise the Lord. My heavens are open at last. My heavens are open. My heavens are open. My heavens are open at last. One more time. My heavens are open. My heavens are open. My heavens are open. Be close to me, before God. Say, oh God of divine abilities. Open the heavens of new things. Over me and my family. Can you pray seriously? Father, open the heavens of new things. Heavens of new things over me and my family. Father, open the heavens of new things. Heavens of new things. Heavens of new things. In the breakfast service, we receive new things. New things, oh Lord. New garment of honor. New open doors. Open the heavens of new things in this family, Jesus. Oh yes, oh Lord. New things, oh Lord. New things, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, pray. Because time is gone. Your right hand up. And I pray. I see those new things happening. For the Egyptian you have seen before, you shall see them no more. Amen. Jesus, the God of divine ability. Every one of us have defied the news to come and seek your face. And we are not ashamed to be here on the first day of resumption. Because we are here today, Lord. Everyone here is tired of the old. And we are looking up to you for the new. My Father, let every old experiences of failure, old experiences of oppression and attacks, every experiences of delay and fruitlessness, every bad experience of the past, let them come to an end in the name of Jesus. Father, over everyone hearing me on ground, online, let the heavens of new things be open. Over everyone online and on ground, let the heavens of new things be open. Over every family, let the heavens of new things be open. Over their children, over their health, over their finances, over their sleeping and waking up, over their businesses, over their career. Jesus, open the heavens of new provision, new power, new vision, new height. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will give you a new garment of honor. Yeah. You shall not be dishonored. Yeah. You shall not be put to shame. Yeah. The Lord will glorify His name in your life. Yeah. Father, today is the first day. Thank you for making it possible for the church to open. Yeah. We pray, oh God, as we resume for the anointing service next week, do a new thing for us. Yeah. For coming here today, you shall not be forgotten. Yeah. You shall not be abandoned. The Lord will remember you for good. And as a step out of this place, the dimension of God you have never seen before, you begin to see him in a new dimension. Your knees shall be supernaturally met. Your battles are won. You will sleep and nothing will make you afraid. For the Lord will attack your attackers. The Lord will stop your stoppers. And over you I will not cry. Over me you will not cry. Our joy shall be full together. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen. Hey, amen. In case anybody need counseling, if you can't wait today, tomorrow I'll be in the office at Osborne from 10 till around 2 to 30. So let's shout three big hallelujah, then we share the grace. One to go. Hallelujah. 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 And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and nature follow us 
all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And you and your house will say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and my household all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And the name of the Lord is a strong sword. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So we are saved in Jesus' name.